Hey gang, I am on the country roads here in Missouri. I'm actually about 10 miles northeast of Lamar. And I'm heading to a cemetery that's near a town called Milford. And I gotta tell you what's, what's really interesting. This is like probably the way it was unchanged for since the 1800s. We're going to the grave of Wyatt Earp's first wife when he was in his 20s. Her name was Eurilla Sutherland, and what's interesting for me and intriguing are a couple of things. One, Eurilla is a complete enigma. There is very little known about her, and also this area is intriguing in that I believe the way, you know, I was looking at Google Earth and looking at just driving in here, this has got to be the way it was back in the day and I'm kind of hoping oh look at this little bridge here with the creek I'm kind of hoping that and I'm guessing that the cemetery is is going to be the same as it was when she was buried so we'll check it out here it's about a mile up this road okay we've just emerged from more of the woods area. We're open, open farmland here, and I can see the cemetery up on the left. Yeah, this so this cemetery is called Howell Howell Cemetery. Sometimes, I guess it's also known as Owen Owen Cemetery, and uh, looks very old. Look at that! Oh, it has one of the old signs too. You're gonna love that. Is yeah, Howell Cemetery. Look at that thing. That is very cool. Under perpetual care. Well, let's drive in and have a look. All right, we are in. Let's find Urilla. This is just as I imagined. I feel like I'm back in the 1800s here, and you have to imagine that nothing has changed. These trees are really, really old. This has to be how it was when Urilla was buried. Well, let's take a walk to her grave. But you can just imagine standing here 
and she's buried up there, way up there. And you can just imagine the people gathered, Wyatt, his father, the family, her family. You could just imagine seeing them in black all at the top of that hill there, burying her. You could almost see it. Well, I have to talk about Wyatt Earp. Many of you know who Wyatt Earp is to frame the story. And like I said, there's not a lot known about Urilla. Lamar here. Lamar is very close by. This is where they got married. So I'll start by giving a little background on Wyatt to give a backdrop to this whole story. Of course, Wyatt Barry Stapp Earp was born in 1848, March 19th. All the brothers and sisters, Nicholas the father, and his second wife was Virginia Ann. Wyatt was actually born in Monmouth, Illinois. Monmouth is not far from where I live, and one of my partners, Sherry McNall, grew up in Monmouth, and she knew the Earps. There are a lot of Earp descendants there. Still there, I spent a couple of days looking at manuscripts and all kinds of stuff about the family. Of course, they weren't there a long time before they headed out. Let's see, look at the other side of these stones here. I don't see any inscriptions. Ah, okay, here we go. So we'll look at some stones on the way and I'll tell you the story. I mean, just getting back to Wyatt, he born in Monmouth and they made a journey from there west and they were heading to San Bernardino County in California. They intended to buy some farmland, the family, and about 150 miles west of Monmouth, their daughter Martha became ill, so they stopped there and sadly, she died May 26, 1856. Uh, they had been there long enough in Pella, Iowa, where it was that Nicholas bought a farm. And that's where they were living. The Civil War started. Wyatt's half-brother Newton, James, and Virgil, they joined the Union Army, November 11, 1861. And Father Nicholas was pretty busy recruiting and doing his, he's doing other things for the town. So Wyatt and his younger brother, Morgan, and his youngest brother, Warren, Morgan and Warren, were left in charge of the farm. Wyatt was only 13 years old. We've seen it depicted how he tried to run away and join, join the army each time his father tracking him down, bringing him home. It's true. It is true. On the move again, 1864 in May, organized a wagon train and the family headed to, finally made that trip to San Bernardino. They got there in December. And during the next year, 16-year-old Wyatt would help his older brother Virgil as a stagecoach driver. And the year after that, Wyatt himself became a teamster for a couple of years. He drove cargo all over the West. I think he put some 700 miles on. Well, in 1868, they came East again here to this place. I was talking about Lamar. It's about 10 miles away from here, the cemetery. He became the local constable. And that was in 1869. And later that year, he became the Justice of the Peace. 
So Wyatt was appointed constable in his place. In late 1869 is when Wyatt courted a certain 20-year-old woman, Eurilla Sutherland, daughter of William and Permilia, who operated the Exchange Hotel in Lamar. They were married by Earp's father, Nicholas, January 10th, 1870, and all was well. Wyatt was gonna settle down here, raise a family, bought a small house, and everything was good. Eurilla was about to deliver their first child, but as many of you know, she caught typhoid fever and suffered, and with her child, she died, they both died, the unborn child. And let me tell you something, it devastated Wyatt. And of course, it's probably why he never talked about it. He kind of spun out of control after that depression. He didn't burn the house down, as is depicted, I think, in one of the movies. He sold the house and he headed out. He had a series of legal problems starting in March 1871 in Barton County, Missouri here, filed a, had a lawsuit filed against him. He was in charge of collecting licensing fees for Lamar funding the schools and he was accused of keeping the money or some of the money and then really much worse which could have been a hanging he and two other men were charged with stealing a couple of horses March of 1871 from a guy named William Keyes while they were in Indian country which would have been Oklahoma south of here. So he was put in jail. His bail was set at $500 and on May 15th there was an indictment issued for him. And I don't know whether his father did break him out of jail like is shown in the movies or not, but he did not wait around. He did get out of there, or I should say out of, out of Missouri. He actually, it is said either his father got him out or more likely he did break out getting through the roof of the jail. And he headed east northeast Peoria, Illinois, where he got in more trouble. Well, as we all know, things got better after that. Once he headed west, Kansas, Wichita, Wichita, Kansas, and Dodge City, and you know, that's where he became really famous, moving on town after town, exploits, ending up in Tombstone. But this is the grave of Eurilla Sutherland. Like I said, I've, I've wanted to come here because she is such an enigma. And there, there really is, there's a picture we can see of her, but there's just very little known. Now the tombstone here is a new one. I believe she was 22. It says 1849 to 1870. Maybe she was only 21, but I thought she was 22. But what's interesting is the original, this is the original tombstone. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that stonework. Weathered away, these harsh climates. Completely illegible. So it's nice that they, probably people of the town here, 
got this stone for her. And standing here, I've got to tell you, it's surreal. Why is it surreal? It's, well, you know that it was like this when she was buried. You, like I said, you could just stand, and you could see them standing here. This tree has got to be at least 150, maybe 200 years old. That tree was probably a sapling then, giving her shade. What a wonderful, wonderful spot right here at the top back corner of the cemetery. Well, Gorilla Sutherland Earp, rest in peace.